Hello guys, thank you for tuning in to the for Life channel and today as you can tell we already set up I'm going to be changing the power valve on this Holly Corvator. It is pretty much blown. A way to check it is you can turn your idle screw mixtures all the way in and if it don't die, the car don't try to idle down or die down. Usually it's a power valve when fuel bypass it and you know, you ain't got the idle adjustment circuit. Or it could be you have your, uh, you know, uh, uh, butterflies open too far. You know, I don't adjust it too high. But, if you're here watching this, I doubt you have that on a street car unless it's totally like cam to death and all that. So, yeah, let's just jump into it. I don't want to mumble on because you all want to see this video. That's why you clicked on it. Okay, guys, before we get started, you want to go ahead and disconnect your de uh, negative battery terminal. Make sure it's not touching because you don't want no power to the car. Most people don't even bother with this. But, uh, I had one a long time ago, old Hot Rod Nova, and I was messing around on the carburetor and was leaning over this area here and, uh, pretty much touched the wire and somehow it crossed over and it cranked. And I don't recommend doing anything like that unless you disconnect your negative battery. It only takes a few seconds. Be sure to do that before you even try this because accidents do happen and if you can prevent them, prevent them so let's go to the next step okay guys what we got going on here is pretty much you got four bolts on the carburetor and you got a fuel line depending if you got a dual line or a single feed line into a dual that's what we got uh that's uh will be how you remove your pretty much uh fuel line but on this kind of setup, it's pretty simple. Door feed line will be a little bit different, but just depends on your setup. So, we want to go ahead and remove this. And God, it's cold out today. Very cold. There we go. Got some gas leaking out. That is normal, people. Gas coming out is normal, so we're going to get a wag. We going to uh, catch out the gas for camp. Okay, guys, we went and got a wag. This is an old towel. It'll do just fine. You can pretty much stick it under here. Because they are going to be fuel. No doubt about it. You're going to have fuel leaking out. You're not going to get around it. It's going to happen. Now, you can take your uh, ratchet, wrench, or whatever you uh using. I'm using a ratchet. And, uh, the socket is an 8. And, you know, they ain't super tight. They actually not hard to tight at all. You can pretty much, uh, just, uh, very twist them. As you can see, they don't have to be super tight. These are not hard to tight at all. They do got a little force on them, but... Nothing to hurt anything. Now you want to be gentle if your cord board ain't been off in a while and try not to tear your gasket. But most likely your gasket probably tear if it ain't. This cord board has been put together quite some time but not as much. Crack it a little bit and hopefully all the gas will drain out. As you can see the gasket tore a little bit. Pull these on out a little bit more. Should be able to just pick up. Now, you got a little O-wing. You need to fish it out of that carburetor because you don't want to mash this in now. You can clip the O-wing, then you have fuel leak. Take the O-wing out, put it back on this when you install your bowl. Now, right, here's your float assembly and stuff. You can see our gasket tore a little bit. I should have an extra gasket. For sure I do. 
Actually, that gasket probably you could reuse it, but we ain't going to. So, to remove your metering block, take you one way, get right here, and it should just pop off. Just get under here. Work like this. And there you go. About just like so. And our gasket is pretty well usable. Well, here's your power valve. Okay, guys, it's cold outside, so I came on in the house to do this. Pretty much, here's the old power valve. You can unscrew it. You can do a vacuum test and everything on this if you want to. A gasket looks good. This is a 6.5. As you can see right here, 6.5 if it'll focus. That goes on your vacuum waiting. You want to, like, if you got, say, 12 divided by 2, and you can come up with what power valve you need. This is uh, basically the same exact power valve. I don't think this one's got a number on it anymore. It does. I don't see it. But this power valve, well, it'd help if I hold it on a cold water. This power valve is working pretty good, seems like. But uh, what's it doing is my vacuum ain't white and it's making the power valve all crazy. So let's go ahead and uh, install this with this one. So basically when you install your power valve, let me focus this in a little bit better. You can take it and just screw it in, make sure your gasket is level. Take pliers or something, well I hate pliers. Take you some pliers or something. Grab onto it like so. And just a little twist. Don't need a lot of twists, just a little twist. And that should pretty well have it. Now you can go back and we install it. Look like this gasket is still might be usable. We can put it on and try it. That's the main thing. So uh that has the medium block took care of. Okay guys, we just got the power valve we installed. A medium block gasket looks like it's good to go. I don't know if you can see it. It looks pretty good. We're gonna clean this off with some brake clean or just wipe it off the best you can because you really don't want no junk getting into anything and that's got a little bit of crud on it. Because that's an old power valve, but it was a good power valve. It just come out of a corporate the way we built. So, that's probably good enough. We can throw this back on. Goes on the same way it came off. Two old owls. Hold it on now. Right like so. Now, once you get that, you need to fish out your old wing. Which is pretty simple to do. You can take a little one way or something to fish it out. We'll fish it out with this guy. I don't know if you can see him. Right there we got a hook, kind of a hook. Should be able to reach right back in and I'll fish him out. Just like so. Do you guys see it? I can't see the camera. I'm sorry, but like that's the little O-wing. Once you get that, you can go ahead and install it on your tube, which is hard to do with gloves on. Just like so, installed. Good as new. Now, this gasket should still be good. It's just a little bit of the blue come off of it. Still feels good, so it should seal. We're going to use it because I hate no use changing the gasket if you don't have to. It's just four bolts if we have to take it out. So let's go ahead, take a wag so we have a little bit more room. You can push all four bolts like so. That will help pretty much get that thing in. You want to make sure your arm right here is up and this is down. You don't want to uh, bend that arm in any way or 
you might have a little bit of trouble with it on. So make sure your medium box lined up. You can drop this down, pour it out enough, line it up, make sure all this is set just like so, and then once that thing's lined up, you should be able to just push it on there. If I don't knock the camera off, make sure your O-wing is going too, just like so. But you don't want to cut that O-wing. If it don't go easy, you want to check make sure why it ain't going easy. Now if everything's good, we should have idle down when we work with a mixture shoot screws. We will find out if we do or not. Here in just a second when we uh, hook the battery terminal back up and start the car. Now remember, you got a gasket for a reason. You don't have to get them over tight. Looks like I got company too. Now once you get that, you can go ahead and put your fuel line back on and snug it up. Okay guys, once you get your everything put back together the way it is, before you start it, make sure your idle screws are turned all the way in, back them out one full turn, and it should start up and run like a kitten. Now, you will need to put a vacuum gauge back on it, because anytime you take this off and do any kind of adjustments to anything, you want to check your mixture shoot screws again, and we do them. Hook it to a vacuum gauge, find out where your highest vacuum point is. If y'all need to know how to do that, I'll make a video on that very soon but that is pretty much the simplest way I can tell you to change your power valve on your car we go in more details very soon on power valve and selecting the right power valve if you do want to see that video drop a like drop a comment and I will get on that ASAP but if you don't want to see that video very soon then uh you know just don't drop a comment or like because I eventually get around to it. But if you want it very soon, drop a like and comment. And until next time I see you then, take care. Bye-bye.